All right, all righty. So today's video is on the complete beginner's guide to rolling credit spread. So if you have a credit spread that is probably in trouble, it's not working out for you, then you might consider to roll your credit spread. So first of all, what exactly is rolling, all right? So rolling is simply the simultaneous process of two things, right? The first off is to close out your existing credit spread. So this could be a bull put spread or it could be a bear call spread. And most of the time, it's in a loss, right? Usually it's when it's a loss that you would consider rolling it, you know, giving it more duration so that the trade has a chance to work out. So the first one is usually when it's a loss, you know, if you want to roll, it's close out your existing trade and then you open a new trade for an overall net credit, all right? This is very important because if you were to roll for a net debit, what it means is that you're actually increasing your overall risk and reducing your overall max profit, all right? So this is important. You want to have a net credit because with a net credit, you will be increasing your max profit, all right, max profit. And then if you were to increase the max profit, you would actually be reducing your max loss, all right? So I'll get into this a little bit more later on, but basically what you need to understand is that rolling comprises of just two parts, right? Closing your existing trade and then open a new trade to sell another credit spread. And you want to do all this in a single order ticket, right? This is very important because if you do not do this in a single order ticket, you will have what is called lagging risk, all right? So here's an example. So let's say you have already put on a credit spread. So in this case, this is a bull put spread. So for this bull put spread, you can see that it's trading at $1.12. So maybe when you first put it on, it could be a dollar. So maybe you sold it for a dollar and it's right now, you know, it moved against you. It's now marking at $1.12. So this is where you might want to consider rolling. So let's say you decide to roll this trade. So if you were to roll it, the first thing you would do is to close out the original trade, which means to buy back this bull put spread. So you buy it back for $1.12 and then you want to open a new trade with a longer days to expiration. So as you can see, you close out the one which is in May and then you open the one that is later on is in 16 June. So this is later on. And for this example, we just keep the same strikes, right? So as you can see down here, the credit which you receive for selling this longer duration uh, credit spread, this bull put spread is higher than the debit that you paid to buy back to close the original trade and this gives you a net credit of 16 cents. So which means to say now your new risk profile is different, right? So previously you made a dollar or rather your max profit is a dollar and then your max risk would be four dollars. But after rolling this trade because you, now you have a net credit, so now your new risk profile is whereby your max reward, your max profit will be a dollar 16 cents and then your max loss will be basically this $4 minus off this 16 cents. And if my maths is not wrong, will be $3.84. So as you can see, now you have skewed the risk and reward even more to your favor by rolling it. So what you want to do is by doing it in a single order ticket, you don't want to spread it out. So this is done using the TD Ameritrade, the Think or Swim platform. So you can see down here, it's using the option called Vertical Roll. If you're using Tasty Trade, I believe you can just use the right click function, uh, click on your credit spread, right click it, and then it will give you the option to roll it. All right, so now that we know exactly what is rolling, so the question now is when do you roll it, right? So when is the best time or the optimum time to roll your credit spreads? All right, so first off, here is an example that you can see. So let's say, for example, you are bearish on SPY, right? So this is the SPY, the ETF, the index ETF. So you can see that the market, you know, is pretty extended. It has gone up quite a bit and the market has gone down. So let's just say, for example, you are bearish on this. So if you're bearish on this, one way to trade a bearish uh, way is to enter into a bear call spread, all right? So in this example, you can see we sold the 415420 uh, bear call spread. So when do you roll? So first, you can consider rolling when there's less than 21 days to expiration. So this is the marker that I always want to use. And the reason for this is because when we are trading any short options, any short option strategies like the bear call, right? Whenever your strike gets in the money, there's always a chance for an early assignment. So in this case, for example, you have this bear call spread. If let's say, for example, the market was to get in the money, right, for your bear call spread, 
then there's always a chance that you could be assigned early assignment on your this short call side. Right? So if the call buyer decides to exercise their call option, what happens is that now you will be short 100 shares at this price. And it's going to be a big problem because most of the time when we enter into such option trades, we do not expect to be assigned because you know we just want to trade the options. We do not want to have the hassle of you know, having the shares and we want to clear out the shares. So if you're going to be assigned on this, you need to put up the margin requirement to short these shares. And if you do not have the capital, which most likely most option traders do not have because they just want to trade options, then you could get a margin call. So this is something you want to avoid as much as possible. So the time when there is a likely chance that you could get early assigned is when there is lesser extrinsic value. So extrinsic value, is one of the two values that makes up of the option, right? So you have extrinsic value and you have intrinsic value. So what plays a part in terms of whether you will be uh, early assigned, right? Uh, likelihood of getting early assigned is if you your extrinsic value is very little. And the time when the extrinsic value is very little is when it's very close to expiration. And when the uh, option is deep in the money, right? So let's say for example, the market goes all the way up and your call option now is very deep in the money. That's the chance that's a time when you have very little extrinsic value. So extrinsic value, we already know, will go to zero once the option expires. So that is why we want to use 21 days to expiration as a marker because as the option gets closer to expiration and it's less than 21 days to expiration, that's when the extrinsic value could get very, very little and there will be an increased chance of getting assigned. But if there's more than 21 days to expiration, then there's still quite a bit of extrinsic value left and there's a lesser chance of getting assigned. Now, of course, that's not to say that you definitely won't get assigned if it's more than 21 days to expiration. Remember, the other factor is how deep in the money this call option is. If it's already very deep in the money, then there's always a chance that even though it's more than 21 days to expiration, it will still get assigned. But the thing is that if you were to trade around 45 days to expiration each time you put on a credit spread, then the chances are that it won't go so far deep in the money that by 21 days to expiration, there's not much extrinsic value left, right? Most of the time, there's still going to be quite a bit of extrinsic value left that reduces the chances of you getting assigned. So the first marker is less than 21 days to expiration, which means to say, if it's more than 21 days to expiration, even though it's in the money, there's no need to panic. Chances are, you know, you won't get early assigned and you just let the trade work out, right? Maybe the market could just come back down later on again. Let the trade work out in your favor and theta work for you. Next is only if your short strike is tested because as we know, this is a bear call spread. So that means that anything below the call option, if it expires below this call option, you're going to make the max profit on this trade. So as long as your short strike is not tested, then there is no, not necessary for you to roll, right? Some people are a little bit aggressive. You know, if the market, let me just remove all uh, these drawings down here. So some people might, you know, be inclined to roll if the market just comes up down here, you know, very close to this uh, short call, but it has not actually touched it yet. They might want to roll. You know, that's, that's also fine as well. A little bit aggressive, but you can definitely do that, right? And next, and the most important part is to ensure that you're able to get a net credit when you're rolling credit spreads. And I'll share with you a little bit more in detail later on, but rolling a credit spread is very different from rolling you know, individual short options. Let's say for example, if you do not have this long call, let's say there's no long call here, you just have a short call. If you were to roll this, well, most of the time when you roll your short call, it will almost always be for a credit, right? But when you have this long call in play, so let me just remove this. So when you have this long call in play, then there's a chance that it could be a net debit depending on how deep it goes in the money. And chances are the closer the price is to this long call options, the likelier it is for you to get a net debit. So it's not always that you can get a net credit. So this is something you need to take note of when you think of rolling credit spreads. All right, so the first option, right, in this case, let's say you can see that the market went up, right? So the market went up and then it tested our short call. And let's say at this point, right, you already put the option on for some time and there's less than 21 days to expiration, right? So assume there's less than 21 days to expiration, right? Right now there's 18 days to expiration. So what you want to do is you could roll out to a further expiration date. So in this case, you roll out to the nearest 45 days to expiration date. 
46 in this case, and then you use the same strike. So as you can see down here, you could get a net credit. Right, so a net credit again it means that you will increase your max profit on the trade and you reduce your max loss on the trade and you give your trade additional time to have it work out, right? Have theta working for you as well. So this is the first option to roll your credit spread. Now the second option is that if you can, you can actually just roll your credit spread up, right? You can roll it to a further a higher strike price. So as you can see down here, you can roll from the 415, you roll up to the 418 to the 423, and you may not get a very big credit, but unless you have a enough credit, right, to cover your commission. So in this case, you're probably just rolling for you know net net zero, but now it is out of the money, right? Your call option is now out of money, and then you have an increased chance for the trade to work out, right? So these are the two options that you have when you're rolling it. So this is for the bear call spread. For the bull put spread, it's just simply the opposite, right? So I'm sure you're able to imagine if it's the bull put spread, so I don't have to show it on the chart here for you. By the way, if you like this video so far, please subscribe and also click the thumbs up button, and also do get your free copy of the Options Income Blueprint, where I share the top three options straight strategies that help you generate a consistent income each month trading just one to two hours a day, right? So if you want to go ahead to get this copy, just head on over to optionswithdavis.com slash blueprint. All right, back to the video. All right, next we want to get into the pros and cons of rolling credit spreads. And this is something that you want to be aware of so you can make a decision whether you want to roll your credit spread or not, because not all the time, you know, you always want to roll your credit spread. So here are the pros and cons. So first of all, the pros is that you can reduce the overall risk of the trade. And I mentioned this earlier on already. So here's an example. So let's say you have a $5 wide credit spread and you sold it for $1.50. So that means your max risk is $3.50. So if you were to roll for a credit of 25 cents, that means your max risk is now $3.25 because now you have made an additional 25 cents. You, you've taken off 25 cents of the risk. So in this case, it just means your max risk is $325 per credit spread. And it also means that you increase your max profit as well. So your max profit will now be $1.75. So this 25 cents is also added to your max profit. So with each new roll, so here's a the cool thing about rolling. So if you're able to get a net credit each time you roll, then with each new roll, you further reduce your maximum risk and you increase your max profit. So it's possible that you can keep rolling until the risk reward is so much in your favor, right? So not all the time you can keep doing that because it really depends on where the market is at the point of time where you want to roll, all right? And the last pro is that you give more time for the trade to work out. Now the cons. So the cons is that the trade can take a long time to eventually work out because when you first put it on, it could be just 45 days to expiration, right? But as you keep rolling it over and over again, you keep renewing this cycle. As you keep renewing this cycle, the time it takes for you to eventually get your profit is going to keep increasing and increasing each time you roll. So maybe you start off with 45 days, maybe you plan to take out at 21 days. So now you kept rolling. So the whole trade could maybe take even months, right, just for you to get that profit. So that's one of the cons, it can take quite some time. And you have a lower probability of profit on the new trade. So what I mean is this, right? So for example, we have a bull put spread. So let's say for example, the, the, the market is here and you open a bull put spread down here, right? So you have a minus one put and a plus one put down here. So based on this, let's say there is a 70% probability of profit. That means a 70% win rate. Now the time when you would roll is usually when the market goes down and then it tests your short strike, right? So when it tests your short strike, this is when you choose to roll your credit spread as I've shown you earlier on. So when you roll this credit spread and if you stick to the same strikes, your new trade would still have the same strikes and all of a sudden now it's no longer a 70% because now the market is right in front of your strike, right? Now you are at the money with this trade. So now it becomes maybe a 50% trade workout or maybe less than 50%, right? If you choose to roll it down, then maybe you have an increased win rate and increased probably a profit, but it will still not reach this original 70%. So which means to say, right, if you see rolling as a new trade each time, when you put on the new trade, you close out the old trade, the new trade will always have a lesser uh, probability of profit. So that's one thing you need to take note of. And the 
Last con is that not always, right? It's not always possible to get an overall net credit, especially if your short strike is in the money. So while you always get a credit for rolling the short strike, the debit for rolling the long strike may, might be bigger than the credit, all right? So I'm gonna give you an example here on uh, Amazon. So for this stock, so rolling credit spreads doesn't always get a credit. So as you can see down here, let's assume that you have a bull put spread on for some time already, and it's now in the money. So now it's in the money and you might be thinking, okay, I wanna try and roll. So if you were to look at the options to try and roll this uh, bull put spread, all right, bull put spread, this is not bad cost spread, this bull put spread, you notice that it ends up in a debit, right? It ends up in a debit instead of a credit. So all of a sudden right now, there's no way for you to roll. So if there's no way for you to roll, you're pretty much stuck in this position. So if you are stuck in this position, you know, some people have asked before, so what if I cannot roll for a credit, right? What if it's a debit? Do I still roll for a debit? Well, this really uh, depends on you. If you think that the market is going to come back up by rolling, you're going to give it more time, that means you're still bullish on the trade, then you could maybe to just roll for a debit in hopes that the market could come back up, right? But I don't really like the idea because you are increasing your risk, reducing your max profit. Now, the other thing that you would do is pretty much just hold on to the trade, right? Because you see a credit spread has already an inherent max loss inbuilt in place, right? This is not a naked put option, right? Let's say, for example, you don't have a long put down here. This is a short put, a naked put. If the market was to go all the way to zero, let's say, for example, it goes to zero, then this naked put down here, this short put, it's going to lose a lot of money, right? But this is actually a credit spread, which means to say you have your max loss already inbuilt in place. So even though if the market goes all the way to zero, you're only gonna lose the maximum which you have risked for this spread at the start. So if your spread is already deep in the money and then you cannot roll for credit, guess what? There's not much you can do, right? You just have to hold on to the trade. Either it comes back up or if it doesn't, if you decide at 21 days to expiration, you don't want to have the risk of early assignment, you can close it out. Remember, you do not have to win every single trade, all right? Some people have messaged me, say that, you know, how do I, recover and, and I do not have any loss. Well, it's simply impossible. If somebody was to tell you that they can have zero losses and they always make profit, you know, I would say that's a red flag. You might want to think again, trading is all a game about managing your losses, controlling your profits, all right? So you just have to wait until there's a new setup, new opportunity, and then enter your trade. Make sure your risk is well managed so that in the long term, you will always be profitable, right, in the long run. All right, so let's get back to this. So rolling out this would be a debit. Now let's see what if, for example, you had the other strike. You had a lower strike, uh, your bull put spread strike at around 102 or 103 in this case, 103.98. So if you try to roll this out as well, you notice that it is still a debit, even though it's slightly in the money. So as you can see, it's actually pretty hard for you to roll for a credit. And the only time where you can roll for a credit is if it's somewhere at the money, right? You can see it just touched your put strike. And then if you roll it out, you can get a credit. So that is why, you know, as a rule of thumb, we generally want to roll it once it touches your strike, right? If it's less than 21 days to expiration. So this way, you know, there is a chance that you can roll for a credit. So you might be wondering, why is it that if the market goes below this strike price, this short put, it becomes a debit, right? You cannot roll for a credit. And the reason is because, you see, when you are buying back and, and selling another uh, put for this option down here, you will get a credit. Yes, you will get a credit. But down here, what you're doing is that you are, remember, you are selling off this put option. You're selling off this put option and then you are buying back a further dated put option which is going to be much more expensive. It's going to be much more expensive and that's why it's going to be a debit. And if the market is closer to this put option down here, if this market comes down here, it's closer to here. Now this put option is considered at the money, right? At the money. And if you were to buy an at the money option, that is the most expensive option that you can buy because that's when the extrinsic value is the highest. So that is why the net debit down here, what you pay for is going to be much more than what you uh, sell the credit for in this option for the short put. So that is why it's gonna be a net debit. Now there's another factor that plays a part down here and that is skew. So this is something that you want to understand. Now this is Amazon. 
and a lot of the stocks equities and also especially index ETF what they have is what you call put skew so put skew just means that the strikes at the lower strikes right the lower strikes have higher volatility so down here this volatility will be higher than this volatility down here right it'll be higher than this volatility at the short put so this is what you call put skew the short the lower strikes have higher volatility and as we already know the options value is also uh, contributed by the volatility the higher the volatility the higher the pricing of the options so what you have here is that the lower strikes it's going to have a higher volatility which means it's going to be a price more expensive than the options that is higher strikes so that is why with the bull put option you notice what you're doing is you're selling the cheaper uh, volatility this is slightly lower volatility so you're selling this a lower volatility and you are buying a higher volatility so what you will find that it's much harder to roll the bull put spread on stocks and index ETFs with a put skew but it's easier for you to roll for a credit on a bear call spread because the bear call spread is the opposite, right? The bear call spread, you have a minus one call that is uh, lower than the uh, call option that you're going to buy back. So down here, remember the volatility down here is higher than the volatility down here. So the volatility down here is much higher. So I give it two plus here, it's just one plus in terms of the volatility. So that's why down here you are selling the higher volatility and you're buying the lower volatility. All right, so this is one thing you might you need to understand now the opposite is true as well if there is a call skew then you know that's the opposite call skew means the bull put spread is going to be easier for you to roll for a credit whereas for the bear call spread it's going to be harder for you to roll for a credit all right this is quite a bit to take in but if uh, you want to get clarity on it just rewind this video watch it over and over again all right so time for some takeaways so the first takeaway is that rolling credit spreads can reduce your max risk and increase your max profit and it gives you more time for the trade to work out so this is the advantage of rolling now however roll trade will have a lower probability of profit and since duration has been extended it takes a longer time for profits to be realized so this is the disadvantage so when you roll you generally want to only consider rolling when the trade is generally in a loss or when the price is near the short strike or in the money basically like i mentioned earlier when it touch your short strike and there is uh, also less than 21 days to expiration and you're able to get an overall credit and last but not least there is a limited window of opportunity to get a net credit roll as i've shown you earlier so if there's put skew it's easier to get a net credit roll for bear call spread and if there's call skew it's easier to get a net credit roll for your bull put spread so that's how you roll credit spreads by the way if you like this video then you're absolutely going to love this next video which i have for you so go ahead and watch that video right now also if you haven't already gotten your free copy of the options income blueprint you can do so just by clicking this link down here on your screen and you'll be able to get it for free all right, I will see you in the next video.